Richard Benjamin Speck grew up in the flat expanses of rural West Central Illinois. Where were you born at, Rich? Where was I born? Yeah. Kirkwood, Illinois. When was you born? December 6, 1941. Speck entered the world the day before the Japanese sneak attack on Pearl Harbor. They out of court, all hell broke loose next day. And stop six. He was the seventh of eight children to Benjamin Franklin Speck and Mary Margaret Cabrera Speck. Speck's father worked long hours as a farmer, logger, and packer. He died in 1947 at age 53 from a heart attack. This devastated Richard, for him and his father were very close. Richard's mother married Carl August Rudolph Lindbergh, a traveling insurance salesman from Texas, on May 10, 1950. While Richard's mother was a strong religious woman who didn't condone the use of alcohol, Richard's stepfather was a heavy drinker who had a criminal record that in included forgery and drunk driving. Richard and his younger sister moved to Texas with their mother and stepfather. For the next 12 years, Speck and his family lived at 10 different Richard addresses out of the in some house. of Dallas's poorest neighborhoods. He would get drunk, call Richard a gutter rat, and tell him he couldn't stand the sight of him. To get back at Lindbergh, Richard would break into his liquor cabinet, have his fill, and disappear from the house. By the time he was 15, Richard was getting drunk nearly every day. He dropped out of school and began hanging around with a tough crowd of older teens who introduced him to marijuana, pills. He struggled through adolescence when it came to communication because of his lifelong fear of people staring at him. At the age of 20, Richard was a known petty criminal. He had a long list of misdemeanors, drunk and disorderly conduct, indecent exposure, and shoplifting. His slick back, dirty blonde hair, deeply pockmarked face, and crude tattoos made him look dangerous. A tattoo on Speck's forearm read, born to raise hell. But it was the empty boast of a young man who always wished he was tougher. He met 15-year-old Shirley Annette Malone at the Texas State Fair, and after three weeks of dating, she became pregnant. They got married on January 19, 1962, and on July 5th, Speck's daughter, Robbie Lynn, was born. While Speck served 22 days in jail for drunkenly disturbing the peace in McKinney, Texas. He worked at a 7-Up bottling company in Dallas to support them, and eventually got fired. Shirley denied ever cheating on him, but Speck didn't believe her and wanted to punish her any way he could. He would pick up lady friends and drive them to his apartment. As his pregnant wife watched, he kissed and fondled them in the car, laughing at her before speeding off. Richard also refused to pay Shirley's medical bills. After countless visits to prison, Speck left Texas on March 9, 1966, when his sister Carolyn drove him to the Dallas bus station and he caught a bus to Chicago, Illinois. Speck stayed with his other sister, Martha Thornton, and her family in Chicago for a few days, and then returned to his boyhood hometown of Montmouth, Illinois, where he initially stayed with some old family friends. By this time, Shirley had already filed for a divorce. Speck got a job as crew for a U.S. Navy boat on his brother-in-law's recommendation to work for the U.S. Navy. Richard's job was cut short when he got appendicitis and got fired after a quarrel with another crew member. Richard went back to Chicago and stayed with his sister again until she kicked him out and gave him $25. His life was in utter shambles, and his rage was about to explode. Speck had always believed that he was somehow destined to shock the world. He was about to realize his ambition. He stayed at a hotel in Luella Park. Next to his hotel was an apartment building used by South Chicago's Community Hospital to house nursing students. On the day of July 13, 1966, Specks followed around a middle-aged woman from bar to bar. He finally at knife point led her up to his hotel room at night, raped her, and stole her 22 caliber pistol. 
With the pistol and switchblade, he broke into the nursing suit apartment down the block. He walked into Cora Maurer's room and led her and five other students into the living room. With a wave of the 22, he sat them down and lit a cigarette. And he was very beguiling. He sat on the floor, smoked cigarettes, laughed, talked to him, kept telling him he wasn't going to hurt him. He just wanted to get their money and leave town. Smiling and using his softest Texas drawl, Speck said that he planned to jump a ship heading for New Orleans and began collecting money from the six women one by one. Gloria Davy came home from a date with her fiancé and was immediately held hostage with the others. The nurses believed they could use their people skills to calm Speck down. This only made him worse.